Perfect. We are live. Right. Um, we'll wait for a couple of people to maybe join in and then we'll start. Um, I'll send a message to everyone saying hello. Yes, so we're definitely live. We are, um, let's see. Oh, we already have a share. Did you share it with somebody? No? Interesting. <laughs> okay. Okay, we have three viewers. So. Yep, so say hi guys, whoever is joining us, and thank you very much. Um, this is debut for me, and I think it's debut for Vicky as well. Both of us just um, trying this technology and see how we get on, and then, yeah, so we're gonna wait for um, a couple of people to join in more. We've got four people now joined in, which is great. Yep, we have... So I think we're going to start, and if people join in, they can always um, start watching it from the start or watch it on repeat because the video is going to be saved on our Facebook page. And then yourself, Vicky, you could just share it on your Facebook as well. So thank you very much, Vicky, for joining in. Um, today we're chatting with Vicky Chapman, who is a support group leader of Endometriosis UK, Dundee support group. So we're going to be talking all things endometriosis, and I've, I've got a couple of questions prepared for Vicky, and I'm going to ask her a couple of questions. And then please ask questions. I'm going to try and keep an eye on um, chat to make sure I do ask questions. But if not, I'm sure if we miss something, I'm sure we can go back afterwards and just reply to people. Also, if you want to send us questions in private message, because we understand it's a private issue that somebody maybe don't want to be identified, feel free to send a message to Facebook page at Period Positive or Vicky will give you her contact details at the end that you can contact her at any time. Okay, so we will start. So, Vicky, I am aware that you yourself live with endometriosis, and when I heard your story, it really inspired me. So I was wondering if you would mind to share in your story with us and with our viewers, with our students.
Yeah. Thank you so much. And what is kind of support available there for people who suffer with endometriosis? So have you created your group after you've attended five group or so there's never been a group in our in our locality? Oh, somebody is saying that there is no audio properly. I don't think speaker audio is coming through. Oh. Yep. Sorry, guys. Sorry about that. Okay. Can only hear Tatiana. Oh, interesting. I could hear Becky very well. Right, sorry guys. Hmm. I am actually not sure what because I could hear Becky really well. We can hear facilitator. Um. Oh, oh, interesting. How about this, guys? Can can people hear me now? We have to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> that is a different view, so maybe that's my my fault. So that's I do okay. apologize. If people can hear us now, then we could just go over again because we've just started nine minutes ago and I wonder if we can then cut it on Facebook. Yes, right, okay. Okay, okay. Good. So, um, apologies for this. Right, guys, I'm real sorry, I'm not gonna type anymore. So I do apologize, this must have hit by mistake. Like I said, um, we are just debuting this, so I do apologize, we're gonna do it again. <laughs> this was our trial, there you go, Vicky, this was just yeah. trial. Okay, right. <laughs> um, Thank you very much, guys, and I do apologize again. And um, yeah, so this is Vicky. Vicky is group leader, support group, support group leader of Endometriosis UK Dendy support group, and I'm really grateful for Vicky coming in on tonight and chatting to us and um, sharing her story. I have heard Vicky's story before, and it has really inspired me because all my life I have complained about my period pain where. A Pile of paracetamol usually sorts me out. And I think after speaking to Becky, I actually was never aware of endometriosis and I didn't know this exists. And after attending her support group, just as a guest, it really helped me in my job because then I feel that now I could support my students more or at least I could um, 
divert them into other support groups or other people that are aware more than me. So thank you very much, Vicky. And I was wondering if you would kindly share your story with us. Um, yes, again. <laughs> That's okay. Um, can everyone hear me now? Okay. I, I think yeah, that, yeah, then, saying that they can see and they can hear you. Yep. Oh, cool, great. Okay. So yeah, my story started in um, 2017 when I started getting bad back pain on a daily basis. Um, I had gone to the doctor and got told that I had a UTI, so urinary tract infection. Um, and got given tablets. So my symptoms hadn't gone away. So I went back to the doctor again and seen a different one. And they had said, I maybe I might need some scans along with some blood tests. So the blood tests um, came back okay. The pain was still there. Um, and I ended up, I seen another doctor who then had asked if I'd had my cancer markers checked. Uh, along with having celiac disease. So she told me the cancer markers test would come back quickly. So the day after I'd had the cancer markers test, I got a phone call saying that my results had come back, but the doctor couldn't speak to me for 24 hours. Um, so I had a, a day of thinking I might have cancer, which wasn't where I expected to be. Um, I then had that particular day as well, it was the election and my husband was doing election duty. So I had a day at work and then I came home and I was by myself and, you know, my head was all over the place. And um, so after that, I got referred to Gynae fairly quickly because of the risk of cancer. Um, Gynae had then asked me to go for a scan. So I had, I had ultrasounds done. And then I then had an MRI done, uh, which showed up suspected endometriosis, but I still had to have a surgery to confirm that, um, which I had probably about four months later. So uh, surgery is the gold standard for diagnosing endo. Um, and basically straight after that, my gynae wanted to put me into temporary menopause. So here I was aged, uh, how old was I? 20, 29 by that point. Um, wanted to put me into temporary menopause and he didn't have time to tell me what it was going to do to my body so I refused. Um, he was quite surprised by that and tried to scaremonger me a little bit into going on it and telling me I was going to end up with like a colostomy bag um, but I, I still refused and by my follow-up appointment I had then done some research and thought okay I'll, I'll go on the treatment. However by my follow-up he then offered me alternatives um, and then, yeah, basically I tried the combined pill first, that didn't work. I then went on Zolodex, which is the treatment he wanted to put me on, so injections for temporary menopause. And I was on that for about six months. And then from then I was on the mini pill, which I've been on since, so two and a half years, well, slightly over, which keeps my symptoms at bay in the main. Um, and has stopped my periods. However, I never had surgery to remove my endo that was there because my consultant was quite clear it was just a diagnostic surgery rather than a let's go in and remove stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm now on the waiting list for Aberdeen uh, rather than Tayside just because Aberdeen is a specialist centre and I have stage four severe endometriosis so with bowel involvement so I need to be seen at a specialist centre. Thank you very much. So what kind of support is available there for those living with endometriosis? Okay, so um, Endo UK have quite a big support network. Um, in Scotland, we now, have a, we, ha we now have more groups than we did when I was first diagnosed. So when I was first diagnosed, we only had three groups, which was Edinburgh, Glasgow and Fife. Um, <laughs> so nothing further north than Fife. And since my diagnosis, there's now Dundee, uh, Aberdeen and Endo Borders as well. And yeah, so there's the support groups who meet regularly and um, virtually just now due to COVID, but normally face to face, uh, along with Endo UK's helpline, which is also run by volunteers and the Health Unlocked uh, forum, which is what I used to start with when I was first diagnosed. And then I started mm -hmm. attending the Fife group, um, which I found really beneficial, like being in a room with people who just understood what you were going through. You didn't feel alone. Um, you don't feel you have to justify how you're feeling, like you can go and feel in rubbish and they're not going to say anything about it. Um, and it was by going to the Fife group that Endo Dundee was born because uh, Claire, the group leader for Fife, 
was really a huge support to me in setting up the group and uh, keeping me right and even still keeps me right although I think I, I keep her right with her um, commitments now too she often jokes that I'm her PA and how did she manage without me so um, I think we, we both do each other a favour there. Oh, this is, this is really good because then you find soulmates, isn't it? And it's good to work together. So statistics shows that there's about one in 10 women in UK struggle with, with endometriosis, but many go undiagnosed. What do you think should be done to improve the statistics, to improve service for women who struggle? Okay, so um, you may be aware that the there's recently been all party parliamentary group report come out on endometriosis and um, which has recommendations so the the report came out and showed that diagnosis times for endo hasn't changed in the last 10 years and um, so currently the diagnosis average diagnosis time for scotland's eight eight and a half years yes eight and a half years i'm getting confused um and basically we, we need to try and get those figures down because endo can it can be misdiagnosed as other things so it can be diagnosed as ibs and it's it's difficult because essentially we're having to fight to get to get a diagnosis and like my own diagnosis my period started when i was aged 11 um, and i wasn't like i didn't receive my official diagnosis until i was 29 at which point my endo is at a stage where it's you know everything's stuck together and um we don't know what what that's going to mean like for my fertility for example um but it's i think it's important that young people have an awareness of what endometriosis is i hadn't heard of the word myself until i had my mri and then got told it was suspected endo and my husband i'm very lucky that he went away and did research before i'd had a chance to so he went and did Dr. Google and I stayed away from Dr. Google. Um, so I think sometimes with endo, you can hear so many horror stories, but you can also hear success stories. But I think people are maybe sometimes more likely to speak out about the bad ones rather than the good ones. So you've mentioned that you've started your period at 11 and perhaps you have experienced pain throughout your life having periods. So we have currently girls and women watching our chat and I'm, I'm sure there's going to be lots watching this afterwards. What kind of advice would you give to young girls who started their period or maybe whose period started a couple of years ago and they suffer really, really bad pain, but they're under impression that's normal? What kind of advice would you give them? I think like for me, I thought what I was going through was normal. Um, mm -hmm. I think newsflash, it wasn't. Um, it's, I think what's really important and what I should have done looking back is I should have kept like a, a diary of my symptoms. So uh, Andrew, you can have a great resource on their website that's like a pain and symptoms diary. Um, I feel if you have that to take along with you to doctor's appointments, then that's probably quite useful to have. Um, it's not normal to have to take time off school or work because of period pain or anything that's impacting your daily activities. If that is the case, I would say that you probably need to seek advice from your GP. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it's useful to have someone with you at those appointments because I think sometimes doctors may well sort of brush you off and think it's a young girl coming in, it's period pain, it's normal. Um, it's it's not like, I mean, the symptoms of endo to kind of look out for um, are painful, heavy or irregular periods, along mm -hmm. with uh, pain during or after intercourse, pain when going to the toilet, whether that be to empty your bladder or your bowel, um, pelvic pain, fatigue, which to me, I've always had fatigue and I had glandular fever when I was a teenager and I just thought it just took me just to get over it. but. I think it was probably endo underlying. Um, and then the other thing is difficulty getting pregnant. So some people won't necessarily know they have endo until they try to have children. Um, and then they may undergo tests, which, you know, will, yeah. they still have to be diagnosed by laparoscopy. Um, but so, yeah, sometimes it's it's kind of at that point where people find out. Yep. And I think what message kind of I got when I attended your group is that I think it was brought up a couple of times that if you do go to doctor, 
and you haven't got a result that you maybe wanted or you don't feel satisfied, then what's been said is that go to another doctor because everybody have their own perception, everybody listen differently, everybody have a different knowledge. Would you say that's true? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's really important that if you don't feel you're being listened to by one GP, I would always say try another. Mm -hmm. If it comes to the point where, you know, you want to try a different practice, if that's practical, like in terms of if you're allowed to based on where you live, I would say do that too. Another alternative would be to find out if anyone in your GP surgery has um, a gynecological qualification. Um, that's something that I hadn't really thought about that much myself until fairly recently. Um, but I think that's probably your best chance. Like if if there's a doctor there that has a gynae qualification, I would hope that they would be aware of the symptoms of endometriosis to look out for. Um, there is also a training course for GPs as well. Um, the Endo UK have set up with uh, the Royal College of GPs. Um, so that's an, that would be another thing of maybe suggesting to your doctor, well, that's available. Um, but yeah, I definitely think if, if you're not happy with what you're getting from the doctor, I would certainly seek advice from a different GP. And that goes for gynees as well. Like, you know, if you if you don't feel you're getting anywhere with a particular gynee, then I think certainly by all means, you're within your rights to ask for a second opinion. And that's essentially what I did, because. Uh, when I went to Tayside, um, I got seen and I got told I had stage four um, and I got told I needed more surgery. But then my consultant didn't seem all that confident at doing the surgery. So I was very much like, well, if you don't feel confident, how am I supposed to feel confident in your ability to do what I need to have done? Um, he also had a tendency to speak to my husband about his womb, which obviously he doesn't have. Um, but you would think a gynae would be used to speaking to women about women's parts. However, my gynae would appear very good at the surgery aspect. My scars are very small. But on the other hand, his person skills maybe aren't quite as good. Mm -hmm. So what kind of advice would you give women who live with endometriosis every day? Hmm. I would say, well, that depends. So I think if you have to have painkillers on a daily basis, there isn't anything wrong with that. Um, I'm not very good at taking my own advice with that point. Um, I quite often will have a little break from my painkillers, which isn't what I should do. I should try and take the painkillers to keep on top of my pain. Um, but I know some people just don't like taking painkillers. Mm -hmm. um, I think something else I would say is inform yourself like be knowledgeable about the treatment options that are available don't feel pushed into going down a particular road just because your doctor or your gynae are wanting you to do it like there's no pressure on you to go on any treatment if you don't want to it's your body mm -hmm. and you know better than anyone else so I think the difficulty with endo is that there isn't a cure and um, it's just a case of there's treatments that can help to keep on top of symptoms um, another regular thing that people are told is to go and have a baby or have a hysterectomy and neither of those are a cure for endo either. Um, they may well help alleviate your symptoms, however, it may still come back. Mm -hmm. And that's the difficulty with it. it. There isn't one treatment works for all. So like when, when I get asked for advice about particular treatments, I can only share what my experience is. I can't say it's definitely going to work for you because I don't definitely know it's going to. We all, it all reacts differently mm -hmm. so endo uk have like a treatment options information pack so i find that's a really good resource to refer back to and um, i would also say try and seek out if there is local support so for dundee and angus it would be myself my group and um, so i have a facebook group which it's a closed group so people can't just access it so you have to request to join um, so that's Endometriosis UK Dundee support group. And then I'm also on Twitter and Instagram at Endo Dundee. There's also on Endo UK's website, there's a page about the group as well. So that kind of has a bit of my story about a bit about what the group is. And yeah, basically that that's it. But I, I think it's just about sometimes you have to be your own advocate. You shouldn't have to be. But I think sometimes we just have to be.
Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much. And we could share links in that um, afterwards. And I think one of my last questions is um, today is obviously history day and Scottish history and world history that um, the bill just been approved about an hour ago that now period, period products sorry, going to be absolutely free in Scotland for those who need it. And they have to be in all public buildings by law now. So I think um, as a Scotland, this is a remarkable achievement and it definitely making history. But obviously, that's not all and that's not the end of it. What do you think should be next? What should we as a nation should do next in, in periods, in relation to periods? It, it is a momentous day, um, certainly for... Uh, endo people and also like just anyone anyone who has a period um it's it's amazing and the work monica lennon has done is truly inspiring um along with other organizations that are promoting period dignity including yourself mm -hmm. um so i think i think the main thing for me is that it needs to be covered in education um so Endometri well, not endometriosis, menstrual well-being is now on the curriculum for England. Um, mm -hmm. However, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland aren't there yet. Um, it's come out in the APPG report that I mentioned earlier mm -hmm. uh, that all four nations should have it on the curriculum. Um, so for me, that's, that's the main thing. I think boys, girls, parents, whoever, everyone needs to know about it so they know what signs to look out for. Um, and for me, that's that's key. Education is where it's at. I think if I'd if I'd had an awareness of it sooner, I might have sought advice about it sooner. Like I got given methanamic acid, which I'm sure anyone who's on the call um, with endo may well have been on methanamic acid at some point or another. I got given that in my teenage years, and basically just got told to take that, and that was what I did. Um, again, thinking that was normal that everyone was on strong painkillers for periods mm -hmm. um so yeah for me education is definitely what's next it it needs to be because i think that's the only way diagnosis times are going to come down um with the yep yeah, i've totally lost my train of thought now brain fog another frequent like flyer of endometriosis and i'm sure again others with endo will completely concur with that point Thank you very much. I absolutely agree with you. And those of you that who follow on our page, if you don't follow yet, please press like. Um, at the Indian Angus College, we are really passionate about education. And if you go through our page, you will see that very proud that we are including males in education. Boys are learning about periods. Boys are learning about tampons. They're learning how to put menstrual cup in. We have really nice demonstrators. So it's education at the college we are definitely breaking breaking the way and i really hope that many education establishments are gonna follow the way and i'm just reading the comments lorna armstrong saying that it's not just girls and women the males need educated too i 100 percent agree with you lorna i think it's really important regardless you're a brother you're a husband you're a son or you're going through transition and you're transitioning to be a female for anybody every single gender regardless of your age regardless of your age, gender everybody should be included in period education and it's really really important and i do hope that um scotland is currently leading the way on period products and soon we're going to be leading the way on education as well so that's all from me if anybody have any questions please put them in chat and i will read them out um, and we will ask Vicky if you have any questions for Vicky or you have any questions for me, please feel free to do so. So wait for a couple of minutes um, for you to type your questions. Uh, in the meantime, like I said, feel free to drop us private message on DNA Period Positive or private e message Vicky. Vicky will share her contact details and chat below. Okay, I'm just um, checking if there's any questions. No, no questions. Or well, somebody said in your love heart and a love flower, Vicky. Oh. <laughs> you'll, you'll be able to see afterwards. I see on the screen. I think you have the same view as me. No, so, I can. I can see 
things down one side, but I can't comment. It would. Oh, I can see now. Hang on. Yes, Lorna, thank you. Thank you, ladies. Nikki? Yes. Well, I would like to say just a massive thank you to everybody who has joined our first debut um, interview online live. Great talk. There is any advice you would give friends, family, other supporters of people with endo? Yes. Um, I would say um, be prepared. Be prepared for the, the roller coaster of emotions that someone with endo goes through, whether that be the highs, the lows, the I need to just go and have a lay down, I need to cancel plans. Um, it's. I think it's about being understanding and... I think a lot of people with endo find that they lose friends when they've been diagnosed or they kind of drift apart. And I'm very lucky that I haven't been one of those people. Um, I have a really good support network, but I know not everyone is in the same boat. And that's why um, things like the group, for example, are so important because, you know, some people don't have that support network and having somewhere online where you can go and be yourself is is that it's like completely it's necessary in my opinion and i i've heard you before given praise to your husband how he's supportive and how you have said to him that he hasn't chosen this life in with endometriosis but his response was neither did you and i think that's really really heartwarming yeah yeah he's um yes very much so like it's it, i will quite if i'm having a particularly bad day like if i'm on about babies for example so if I'm saying well we don't know if we'll be able to have children because of my endo um it, yeah I will quite often say I will say to him like you know you didn't choose this and he like you say he will just say but neither did you and if I say anything about kind of endo if say like post endo diagnosis he's like you know but if you look back was that always the endo because it hasn't just appeared in the last three years. It has been there for who knows how long. Um, and a few years ago, I actually, I had to have my appendix removed. Um, but when they removed it, my appendix was fine. So mm -hmm. looking back, I now think, was it actually endo? And it just wasn't picked up at the hospital. I had my appendix removed because it was just a general surgeon who did that surgery. Um, but yeah, for me, it's, I think, having a having a listening ear is is always helpful um and potentially having a stock of painkillers and a hot water bottle is always helpful too um they're my go-tos like I, I will quite often wake well when my symptoms were really bad I would wake Joe up like it was like my body had an alarm clock at four o'clock I'd wake up and need painkillers and a hot water bottle so I would wake him up because my legs go numb when I have pain in my back from my endo my legs go numb and sometimes I'll fall over and that's that's not normal either um yeah. but I would I'd kind of prod him awake and be like I need painkillers and I need a hot water bottle so he'd go and do it and you know I think that's why for me I think we need to give like a round of applause for support networks as well because it's not only us who live with the condition it's also them too and it can be hard seeing someone you love going through something like endo if or anything else to be fair um it's a tough one and like for my parents I don't know if my mum's watching she hasn't commented so she might not be <laughs> hi mum if you are um yeah for them like I'm an only child so for me you know the prospect of not having a child that impacts them too mm -hmm. you know they're very they're very much of the opinion of well as long as we have you that's okay mm -hmm. um but I have feel it, I have this feeling of guilt because I can't do what I'm supposed to be able to do um, as a woman. And that that can be hard to live with sometimes. You know, I, I think your husband and your parents do deserve a round of applause because um, anytime you speak about them, they sound like really, really supportive. And all your friends, of course, as well. Yes. Um, yes, yeah, so if anybody have any questions, please put down. But if anybody's watching afterwards and if you're catching up with the live stream and you're watching when you have a minute, um, feel free to drop off messages um, and Vicky will reply. If Vicky doesn't see your messages, I'll forward it to her. So feel free to drop us uh, any message and let us know. And also if anybody's watching and thinking, 
Or what about this? What, what else should we do? Let us know what kind of life we just like I said, it's my debut, so I'm really sorry for the start being a bit of a wonky. But um, yes, if, if this is a success and people enjoying it, then I would love to do more. But let us know who we should be speak to and who should we bring. <laughs> so I'm just watching um, Nick is saying, Vicky is going to hate this, but the work she does for support group is amazing. So grateful. Well done, Vicky. This is amazing. And we know you brought group to this area. So you should really, really pat yourself on the back and say, Thank well you. done. A great life. Thank you, Sarah. And Jackie said, I am watching. Jackie Bowman, is that your mom? Oh, there you go. I think Vicky's getting emotional. <laughs> <laughs> um, I knew you would be. So um, yeah. thank you very much, guys. Um, Vicky is going to go and celebrate her success and celebrate her support network and then she will get back to you on the messages and reply to you and share her contact details yes okay thank you very much for coming on thank you bye bye